Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be talking about connecting an HYVFD spindle combination to your MASO control. Now, the only reason I'm doing this video, and I want to be clear about this, is because I'm getting a lot of clients that are wanting to integrate their G540 to the MASO. Now, the problem with MASO, and I've said this before, uh, you can tell by this diagram that they give you, it's really weak in the sense that I feel if you're selling a controller, let alone anything else, to deal with this genre, you should be providing your clients with all of the information required to actually connect and get functionality out of your system. They don't do that. We're going to cover that now, and I'm going to show you a wiring diagram I think many of you are going to like. It took quite a bit of time to produce, but I'm going to show you why I went through the detail to do it. So let's read what we have here to work with first. Now, to find this diagram, just so you guys all know, you have to go through Google a couple times to find it. I had to do like one or two searches. I even tried using their search bar up here. I didn't actually find it. They have a couple VFDs that they do like this, but either way, let's jump right in. Information, as VFDs have different control parameters, the VFD must first properly be configured to take 0 to 10 volt signals. Wiring the VFD alone will not make it work with the controller. Well, that's interesting to be said, guys, um, but it would be more interesting to show that you have the knowledge to integrate a component you're claiming is compatible with your controller that many people are spending their hard-earned money on um, and not just provide a pretty diagram here with a lot of engineering components. Um, so enough with that. Let's jump in and see how it should be done right. Here is my revised controller integration as far as for the VFD. And first and foremost, you see the VFD here. We have the terminal blocks exposed. You can also see here that there's a lot of erroneous information removed. None of you care about engineering drawings, or why would you? I mean, there's really no point to do it. Let's just talk about proper connections, and let's clean it up and make it clear. The other thing you're going to notice, and we're going to break this into sections because there's a lot to cover, is my GX16 six-pin connector drawing here, which is actually giving you an allocated sticker to service your unit so that you know exactly what you're doing. Um, then we're going to come over here and do it right and provide the settings that are required to get your HYVFD to be compatible with manipulating the signals from mass or any other PWM signal manipulation. So seeing all this come together is a beautiful thing, but once again, I've, I just have a problem when vendors do not provide all the required information. And really all it does is get their clients lost. So let's jump right in and we'll cover real quick the terminal block on the HYVFD. You've got RST, that's your AC power input section for either single phase or up to three phase power input. Now, many of you will be running 110 to 220 volt single phase. Some will be using three phase, not many. On single phase power input, 110 would be connected over here, your live and neutral, which is just your 110 volt leg and a neutral lead, or you'll have a 220 single phase, which will also be two leads, and then you'll be wondering where you're going to put your ground for either 110 or 220. But if we come over here to the output section, you've got UV and W, which are your power power legs for your spindle motor. Now, the thing to keep in mind is UV and W are all power legs, and that means they're all providing 110 volt, also known as three-phase power output. That's why I tell you guys, be very careful when you wire in your spindle power cable, because God forbid you make a mistake, you are dealing with a lot of electricity. So keep that in mind. The thing also to keep in mind, if we zoom in, we've got terminal nine here, which is our ground. But you'll notice there is no ground on the opposite AC power input side. So what does that mean? Well, let's break this diagram down in sections. And like I said, I've spent a lot of time making this anatomically correct, I guess is the best terminology to say it, in that you can see I've got R, S, and T here allocated on their drawing, also labeled VFD power AC cable connections, allocated in the correct way if this unit was turned with the head, meaning the top of it, facing to the left. So you'd see all your terminals then be allocated in that position. T would be on top, S in the middle, and then R. No different than U, V, and W. You can see them here, and if this once again was rotated to the left, you would see U, V, and W, once again, U, V, and W coming up from the bottom, but we also have earth ground. Now, it's interesting, and I want to point you guys in this direction to understand why detail is so important. If we look here on what they've provided and what they're showing you, 
right here is their drawing and they don't even have the earth allocated on the correct side it's allocated over here but they're telling you about a breaking resistor and all this other crap again this is the stuff that frustrates me because i know things like this could be done better pending those selling these components understand what their end users are looking for earth ground will be allocated on this side where the output section is now where is that once again right here and where is it on the terminal block? Right here. So this is totally correct. But once again, being we have only one ground uh, connection on our terminal block for a VFD, and we have the input or the input and the output of the uh, VFD's power cable connecting to it, we have to think logically that you do not make a uh, daisy chain connection in the sense that we're gonna use a terminal block for two connections. What we do is use a VFD ground bus, which is nothing more than a ground splitter. Now I've done a video on this, I'm going to insert it here. And when I say modified, you can see that ground bus bar bolted in. And we actually have a terminal split right here. We have a lead coming in, once again, all solder connections. Use a nice piece of silicone wire coming over, and that splits our ground. And you can see now you've got this entire bar. I removed two of the screws so we have nothing impeding our actual cable pass-throughs. That being said, if you look at the bottom of the unit, you have the giant cable pass-through here, and also the additional cable pass-through to access your terminal blocks. This is the proper way to split your grounds on this unit. Okay, if you ever encounter a VFD, and again, it's regardless of make, there's tons of different makes out there, this process will work across the board. But it's the proper way to do it because you can see here the lead I drew coming in from your power uh, side on the VFD, and it would come over here as far as your earth ground from that, and that would go to your VFD ground bus. And then over here, you have another lead coming in from your spindle power cable. So you can see exactly how this goes, and that takes two connections and safely connects them without daisy chaining okay so that gives you your ground situation handled um, the other thing to keep in mind is that your shield drain also from your spindle cables power cable that will also come over here and be allocated to this earth ground and that means you would safely connect that and i typically solder it right to my lead as far as my ring connector for my earth ground lead going to this uh, terminal and that's totally up to you on how you decide to do it i have clients do it in a couple different ways but again that's the easiest way to correlate this now the other area i want you to really pay attention to first and foremost none of this is you know complex i've cleaned everything up but now i've inserted here another terminal splitter now I want to show you their diagram they have and this is what a lot of these vendors do they just show you a lead coming in and basically merging with another lead so then their clients typically go what does that mean how do I connect it what do I do with it you know what you're actually doing with it and what this symbolizes is that it's going to merge to the DCM line and you can see if we trace this back carefully come up here it goes to DCM so how do we do that many of their clients will go well i'm just going to take this lead and daisy chain it together and connect it any way i can and that means i'm going to run a lead here and just plug two for rules into the dcm terminal block and that would be a fail how you would properly do it and this is the way they should have drew it is that you would use a terminal splitter and you can see the lead coming in here and again it's coming in and you can connect it on any one of these terminals once again i made the terminal block uh, crude other than the fact you're looking at it from an overhead position you can see the screw terminals and all you would do is connect the lead here connect the lead here or on any arbitrary position you'd like and then run it over to the DCM line that would safely give you two connections going to one terminal and doing that yes it's going to make more work for you as an end user but that is the correct proper way to do it under best practice and that once again gives you uh, multiple leads going to a a single terminal okay you can use this terminal splitter idea whether you want to call it a VFD ground bus for this application which is what it is or use a terminal splitter in general to do that with any terminals that require multiple input leads and you only have one terminal that is the proper way to do it number one it keeps your wiring much cleaner and it's the right way to do it when you're dealing with a single terminal block which many of these controllers if not all of them are using 
Okay, the rest of this, I want to make this real simple as far as coming over here with a wiring diagram. Now, many of you already know in my previous video, I showed you a VFD uh, diagram that I have for the G540. Well, this one I modified and I just modified it using a GX16 six pin connector to match what we have connected with the Masso. Now, the thing to keep in mind here that is missing, because I get asked this question a lot, is you just see an image of the VFD. This is what they've provided for the VFD. And then we have just the Masso controller. Well, naturally, you, naturally your controller is going to be somewhere over here, meaning uh, how you have everything mounted and it's gonna pass through. These leads are not gonna go directly to your Masso. They're going to go typically to your controller and then it'll go through like a GX16 connector and everything gets wired. Either way you look at it, you will need a cable run from the mass so you will not be using individual leads. And when you use that cable, I recommend a GX16 six pin cable. Now, when I say a six pin cable, let me be explicit. That means typically a five lead cable with the six pin being allocated to what? That's right, the shield drain, because that cable should be double shielded and that shield drain needs an allocated pin so that inside your electronics enclosure, you will have another ground bus, just like you see here. It's arbitrary. However, keep in mind, it must be on the enclosure, meaning the electronics enclosure side where that shield drain will be allocated. OK, so you can see your connections here. And this is what I want to point out how simple this is. We see one, two, three, four, five connections. Then the next question always comes up. Then why do I need a six pin connector if there's only five connections? Well, I already covered it. There's a shield drain. And you can see it's on the six pin. OK, the other thing to keep in mind is that they're using different colors. And I've discussed this in previous videos. Why are they using a different color leads? So that it makes it very easy for the end user to identify what they're connecting, whether it be VI, ACM, reverse, forward, all of these different colors, as arbitrary as they may be, should be used to make it easy for end users to correctly identify and service their unit. OK, you do not want to use and I'll say this explicitly because a lot of guys do this. I don't understand it. They will say, hey, I'm going to save a couple bucks and they'll wire everything with black leads. And it makes it totally useless to identify anything without you actually seeing the terminal block. If you take notes properly on your bill or you do a wiring diagram, as you see here, it's very easy to allocate what lead color goes to what connection and therefore servicing it becomes very, very simple. So let me prove my point with this very simply over here. The GX16 male six pin VFD interface control wiring diagram lead color is represented by the labels text. And all I did here, here's black. Now the shield drain will not naturally have a lead color. It'll be um, basically a bare conductor it will not have any casing around it then you can see here i've outlined black with white so you know it's a white lead red yellow green so if you say what terminal is uh green on you know five dcm so you know right away boom you can allocate and visually see everything as a match now down here the gx16 female six pin vfd interface cable wiring diagram lead color is represented by the labels text it's the same thing guys the only difference this is a female connector henceforth this is black and then this over here is the male connector now the male connector again is gray and it would be installed as a panel mount inside the rear of your electronics enclosure this way this connector plugs into this connector where this connector's rear pins get allocated to the Masso and you're set. You're basically using the cable as far as the VFD interface cable as an extension cord, so to speak, from all the connections from your VFD here to go to your Masso where it would be inside your controller. So when you think about it like that, it all makes sense. This once again shows the functionality of the VFD as far as the shift key, the value change key, all of that stuff. This should have all been explicitly put in that wiring diagram because I feel it's going to help many of you. And I think this is a better diagram overall just because it shows how easy this can be set up. The more time consuming part once again is that we're dealing with a terminal splitter here and you would be installing a terminal bus bar as far as a VFD ground bus us here so we could split that earth ground that we only have one single one on our HYVFD.
So again, looking at this makes total sense. Again, they have uh, counterclockwise direction, clockwise direction. X, X means not connected. Um, overall, I don't even know why they put that there. I left it there. I just put not connected. And you can see exactly what we have here. But this does not mean, once again, that this unit is now ready to be controlled by your spindle or that this unit is ready to be controlled by your VFD and Masso. What you need to understand is that you still have to program your HY VFD for your particular spindle and make sure it's set up properly as they stated to actually take manipulation from PWM signals. So how do we do that? Well, here is the base level programming for uh, programming your parameters for your spindle. Now, this is based around a 2.2K 220 volt uh, spindle motor. Most of them are going to be the same. If you buy an HY genuine spindle, it will come with the wiring parameters. However, if you do not have them, I highly recommend you go to your vendor. Once again, this is a baseline. 99.9% .9 of HY VFDs will be using this as their baseline. And you can see that right here. I'm leaving it here. All you have to do is go back and scroll. The area of concern to actually allow you to manipulate your spindle speed, and you see here I put with Mach 3 through PWM. In your case, you're using a Masso. Many of you are going to say, I'm not using Mach 3, and that's fine. But guess what? You still have to configure your VFD, and the VFD doesn't know what most control software you're using. In your case, you'll be using Masso, so therefore, you would still configure it for PWM because you want to allow the VFD to be manipulated by that 10 volt voltage swing. So in order to do that, you can see step 11, step 12, and then over here, also configure the VFD's jumper that's located under your VFD's cover where you attach its power cables as illustrated below. And you can see it must be on the left side labeled VI. So again, we look at this and we see now that we have the proper programming to get us as far as the spindle uh, and the VFD correlated. So not only is the spindle uh, programmed properly to run, but also to allow manipulation through PWM while using the Masso. So coming over here then, if we see everything here, we can come in, and I would have to zoom in really great, but you can see slightly the terminal block here. So when guys ask, you know, what terminals are they discussing? I've had guys ask me that. You could see these, these actual allocated uh, text. You could see all of this text right here on these terminals. So you're just matching those terminals. Now, VI and VR, what I just showed you on the programming, there it is. You could see that jumper, and you could see by default it's configured under VR, which means it's going to use the potentiometer. For those guys who don't know what that is, it's right here. This you would rotate, and you could see how it starts small and it gets large. Why is that? Because it's indicating speed. So smaller it is, slower the spindle. Fat, the larger it is, the faster the spindle. Um, you could see here, and when I say faster the spindle, the faster the spindle speed, the slower the spindle speed, just to be explicit. Coming over here. Once again, if we zoom in, these, this is the terminal you will be manipulating. This is the crew drawing of it. But this is the actual jumper. And that's why I said you need to understand that this must be manipulated by the end user upon them getting their VFD. It is not configured out of the box. That also means all of the programming. So everything you see here, once again, these are generic base settings 2.2K 220 volt VFD spindle. Um, it should also be compatible with a 110 volt uh, single phase spindle as well, as far as the spindle motor. Um, HY is very, very basic on their settings, but these are essentially the way to go. The only thing you would be changing is your voltages. Once again, set this to the spindle's voltage rating on the side of the spindle. Input the amps written on the side of the spindle motor. I mean, these are very, very basic, guys. Very, very basic. Up here, it tells you how to reset everything. Once again, I'll pan through very slowly so that you have all of the information you need to once again set up the VFD. I highly recommend you do this portion first, set the VFD up first. Once you get uh, that done, then we would go over and continue and analyzing your diagram. But this diagram right here will get you guys on the right track. I cannot emphasize that enough. 
Um, I will offer this diagram right here um, to be printed as a graphic if you would like. And you can see here, I arbitrarily used uh, just different color leads. I mean, um, my 20 gauge five lead uh, DS flexion is actually designed for GX 16 six pin. That's what I would recommend for this application. I'll put links in the description below of the video. So you'll have that. I would just need to know the exact length you need. You do not need to buy more than you uh, actually require. Um, but colors, if you're using a different cable, let me know the colors. We can allocate different colors for what you want. And in this way, you've got a serviceable diagram. Um, once again, Masso or any vendor can't supply that in all fairness because they don't know what cable you're using and they don't know what colors you're using. So these are the variables that you're dealing with. But as far as connections go, this is as basic as you're going to get. I mean, the rest of it will be programming Masso, which is on their site. Uh, the programming aspect of the unit, they've got a lot of information on. It's where they come with stuff like this, where we're dealing with the VFD itself, and we're also dealing with programming. That's what's missing. And that's where the time constraint is as far as generating everything, along with doing you know highly detailed diagrams like this. Um, but I cannot emphasize enough whatever connections you're using that have multiple leads going to them where there's only one terminal you will always be using a terminal splitter in best practice so again guys i hope that this video has been helpful um, watch it again take notes i cannot emphasize that enough do not expect yourself to retain this knowledge after an eight or ten hour day and go to work on your machine i can't tell you how many guys tell me they do this and i get emails at midnight 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Um, it's very hard for your brain to work like that unless you're working nights, like, and you're really, really used to it. I recommend waiting until you're well rested and focus. This stuff is all detail driven. I cannot explicitly tell you that enough. Everything is detail oriented. One mistake, either you can blow something up in the sense that you'll destroy your, your hardware or potentially get hurt. There's no reason for that. Take your time. And do it right and once again if you don't have the money to purchase the right components to do it right the first time then save just put the money away execute a little self-discipline and then get what you need right the first time and it'll save you more money in the long run i cannot emphasize that enough i want to thank you all for your support this is something that um, i don't typically do because it is a third-party component it's not something i plan on carrying um, i know they change up all the time controllers hit the market constantly the big thing here is that you understand what you're working with and if you are going to integrate keep in mind especially if you're using the g540 the 540 is only designed when it's connected to the masso to just use the g540's drives meaning the motherboard as far as its input output and pwm control is not really used the only thing that it allows you to do because i get asked this a lot about my um, breakout cable my db25 communication cable is that it allows you to use the g540's drives by connecting that cable as a pass-through because again it's got a breakout of all the 25 pins to allow you guys to connect that to the masso so that you don't have to do a lot of extensive wiring plus it's double shielded as it should be so keep that in mind of what you're doing the masso is a device that once again becomes the master controller you're just using drives on a g540 or any integrated drive you're using a lead shine i've had guys do that just keep that in mind of what you're actually working with and it's always better to ask questions or pay for support if you have to because you're not getting the correct support nine tenths of my industry is support because a guy will buy you know a component here a component there a component here a component there this is not like going to the paint store and buying different paints and brushes and you're okay Everything has got to work and mesh together or you are SOL. And I cannot explicitly tell you that enough. So be cautious. I thank you all for your support. I hope the videos help. Take care.